Hi, my name is Kathy Zepatello, and I am the executive director of the Conneaut Public Library in Conneaut, Ohio. I am also president of the board for the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, ARSL. The Rome study helped us make decisions that make sense, and it helped us begin how to understand as an organization how to, how to assess risk. And so with that information, we were able to break into pods, and uh, I had two separate pods. We had an AM pod and an afternoon pod where we never crossed paths. It really helped a lot to be able to put that into perspective of what we really needed to do to stay safe. It was ready reference for us to be able to get that into people's hands and to be able to explain why you're seeing some of the changes that you're seeing. And it, it did help, help people in our community make um, and assess their own risk. One of the things that my library is known for is programming. And it's kind of our claim to fame, and that's where a lot of our statistics derive from. And since we're unable to bring folks into the library with those kinds of numbers, having to traverse in a hybrid model of online programming, um, as well as in-house programming that is safe, that is spaced out, and kind of realizing that even though we have a decent sized library, that under these new parameters, we really have to, uh, to assess our space and are we facilitating things in a safe way and actually the way people expect. My staff has been impacted greatly through this, but I really feel that they have adapted. And that's one thing we know about, about libraries. We like change. We're the change agents in our communities and, and we, we try to build staff that also embraces change. But as a leader and as director of the library, the number one thing that we've tried to do here is really kind of we, we put our staff first. I mean, you know, they're the most important. We're not churning out widgets here at the library. It's people helping people. And when my staff feel like they're supported and that they're heard and that they have health insurance and benefits and they, and, and they feel that they can leave their house and come to a safe work environment, that was our number one priority. And it certainly helped as all of the changes continue to happen. I feel the next steps moving forward will be to continue to create an environment where folks feel safe to leave their house. And, you know, that goes by the appearance when they walk in, how do things feel? Um, also, do they have access to their materials and are, are they able to access these um, in the way that they feel comfortable? So, you know, the next steps moving forward, we're incorporating a lot of technology within the library that it was always on our radar and our, they were things that we always wanted to do but with the pandemic you know it, it forced these things to come along a little quicker so moving forward we are grant writing we understand that we do not have the infrastructure in this library to have the physical meeting space that my community is is clamoring for there is not enough space and we have to address that issue the other thing is, of course, technology. I don't have enough technology in my library, nor do we have someone on staff that can really be dedicated to um, take the lead on that. And a small library, we all know we wear many hats. So uh, we've written grants. We will continue to do that to make sure those needs are met. One of the grants that we just recently received was for a tech coordinator. We'll be adding a full-time tech coordinator here at the library to help the public with whatever they are trying to do, whether it's library related or not. Now, something that might be helpful to other libraries and museums that I've learned going through this is to slow down. Um, I think in libraries, we're very used to multitasking because it is a fast paced environment, no matter what size library that you are in. So learning how to slow down and to be more mindful about what we do and what we touch and who we're talking to and how we're exposed that's not a bad thing to work on one project at a time to see one thing through. My staff, they need to be able to take their uh, time off and we need to encourage that. And I don't need to he even hear why. So we just have to make sure that those benefits that, that staff have, they're, they're being utilized and, and that the team is picking up when they're not there because everyone's going to have a turn at that. Yeah, and you know, I think it, it can't be said enough that People are experiencing trauma and that's us, that's me, that's my staff. Those are the, the folks that we're, we're trying to reach, you know, on the other side of, of that service desk and for that shared experience. And we've been told that and we know that, but now we're living it. And so even though we've always had empathy, 
we understand it a little bit better now. And I think that we're able to make better decisions because we are thinking about our own physical and mental well-being first. And that's not a bad outcome of this pandemic.